Hi, my name is Brian Moran, founder and CEO of Small Business Edge. I'm thrilled today to be in New York City at iHeart Radio Studios with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart and their Passage Profit Radio Show. I'd like to welcome tonight Brian uh, Moran, who has a fantastic uh, program for helping small business owners. Uh, he's been a coach and a celebrity uh, for many, many years, and he's also in the process of starting a website uh, to help small business owners uh, sleep better at night, right? So did I get it pretty well? We're selling mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I spent uh, the last 30 years in uh, in the small to mid-sized business market. And by the way, thank you very much for having me on your program. I appreciate that and I look forward to talking about small business today. It's one of my passions. But uh, I spent about 30 years uh, publishing magazines and newspapers for business owners. I, I might be the only person in America who's been at Success Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, Inc. Magazine, and the Wall Street Journal. That's a lot of success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a lot of moving around. But, uh, and then I had my own publishing company, and we published uh, a number of magazines, including the SBA's National Magazine, for about nine years. So I learned a ton about mistakes that business owners make, and I learned about how some are successful while many fail, and uh, so I turned that into a company, uh, Brian Moran and Associates, which we started in 2012, and we do two things. We help business owners run better companies, and we help marketers do a better job of marketing to the S&B space. So what are some of the types of things that small business owners typically stress out about? So there's a, a simple answer to that, and it's fear of the unknown. And the overwhelming majority of business owners, including your listeners right now, uh, operate in the weeds of their business, meaning that they can see three to five feet in front of them. And they don't know what's coming down the pike. They don't know what next month or three months or six months uh, is going to bring to them. And it scares them, and they, and they don't know why. And so a lot of times I'll tell them, you know, just climb up to about 10,000 feet and see the same fires that you keep putting out every single day. You'll find the root cause of those fires and, and see where you've been in your business, where you are now, but more importantly, where you can go with your business. You can't see that when you're in the weeds of the business. You can see it when you're in the clouds of your business. So what kinds of things would typically be the kinds of fires that small business owners are dealing with? So that's a great question. <clears throat> and I do a lot of seminars, a lot of speaking and workshops uh, around the country. And one of the questions I ask the audience is, how do you wake up in the morning? Are you, there are three types of business owners that wake up in the morning. There are the reactive kinds, there are the proactive kind, and then there's the predictive kind, a business owner. And everyone will say, oh, I'm proactive. I get up and I jump out of bed and I make things happen. Well, okay, great, great. Until you read that first email. <laughs> right? Before your feet even hit the floor. And, uh, and then, you know, I even have some people who say I'm, I'm predictive. All right, just uh, to give you a sense of the audience, um, about 85% of business owners are what I call reactive. 14% are proactive. 1% at the most are predictive. And this is my own measurement, so you're not going to find this in any major research, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's close to being accurate. And so here's what I mean by being reactive. You wake up in the morning, and before your feet hit the floor, you look at your phone, and, and uh, I got another problem with the same employee or the same customer who's giving me excuses about why they're not paying my bill, but it's the same problem. And you keep putting it out day after day after day. And what that does is that slows you down from where you want to go with your company. And you just, you don't identify the root cause of that fire. And if you did, you would say, I'm going to fire that employee, I'm going to fire that customer, or I'm going to change the way we do business so that I don't have to deal with this anymore. So most people pick up their phone and they respond to the world. They say, the world is giving me problem after problem after problem, or maybe even opportunity, and I'm responding to it. What I try and do is, so, so that's the reactive person. Let me tell you about the proactive people. The proactive people have put together a plan uh, the night before. Like they know here are the urgent things I need to take care of, the important things, the everyday and the non-essential. And what they do is they delegate the 
non-essential and everyday things, and they focus on the urgent and the important. And they start with the urgent, and they start with the biggest things. And they don't let these interruptions get in their way. The, I call those time robbers, right? Everybody has the same amount of time. So why is one company so much more successful than everybody else? Because they manage their time. They treat it like it's the most precious commodity that they have. And they're proactive in their business. They say, I'm charged with getting this done and nothing is going to get in my way unless it's something even more urgent than what I'm working on right now. So if somebody calls you, a friend from high school, anybody in your family except for your mother, because my mother's probably <laughs> listening to this. And I, I think she's calling it. now, by the way. <laughs> right, right. Ma, you need I will to talk take with more call. people, is what she's saying. I will take your call, Mom. But what you got to say to them is, you know what? I can call you back at the end of the day. Or I'll call you on my ride home. Or I'll, and you write it down because you want to get back to them. Otherwise, they're going to call you the next day at the same time and say, hey, you forgot to call me. But it's all about focus. Focus, time management. And that's the difference between a reactive person and a proactive person. And now you're going to say, well, what's a predictive person? A predictive person is somebody, it's rarefied air. I really think that these people, it's, it's innate. They're born with this talent. And they just see things that other people don't see and they see the future. You know, it's, it's like a, um, a Jeff Bezos, you know, Amazon. You know, he saw what the potential of Amazon could be, or it's a Bill Gates, or it's, you know, <clears throat> these people who are incredibly successful. Not only did they see what they could be six months, a year from now, but they, saw, they can see what they're gonna be 10 years from now, and they predict it, and they never take their foot off the pedal, and um, I, I wouldn't focus on trying to be a predictive business owner. I'd focus on trying to become a proactive business owner. That's, those are, are great comments, and um, I, I definitely agree with uh, the categories. I think that's a really insightful way to uh, approach things. Yeah, so I think that you've really hit on something there, and one thing, and I'm sure that you coach a lot of people and tell them how to improve and how to be closer to predictive, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a whole, there's a whole, so when you start your business, one other question I ask is, what type of business owner are you? And they say, I say, you know, you can either be a small business owner or an entrepreneur. I start with that. And everybody in the audience says, oh, we're entrepreneurs. That's why we're here. We're entrepreneurs. Okay. So we use those words interchangeably as if an entrepreneur is a small business owner and vice versa. And it couldn't be further from the truth. At one end is a small business owner and at the other end of the spectrum is the entrepreneur. And in the middle of it, those two terms, is someone I call a passionate business owner. So visualize that. You have three cars that are going down the road to success. And one car is a small business owner, and another car is a passionate business owner, and the third car, probably a, a Porsche or a Ferrari, is the <laughs> entrepreneur. So what is the difference then between the business owner and the entrepreneur? Great question. Because on the road to success, you come to forks in the road. Right? You can either go left or you can go right, but you can't go straight. And a fork in the road is something like opening a new location, launching a new product or service, hiring employees, taking outside investment, buying technology for your business. And these are major decisions. Most of the time, small business owners will go left, almost all the time. They'll say, I don't need new equipment, this works just fine. I don't need to hire more employees, that's just taking money out of my pocket. They view all of these forks in the road as if they're, um, these purchases are expenses. It's right. money coming out of my pocket. Rather than investments. And that's how an entrepreneur will look at it. Okay, I'm a small company now, but in three years I want to be a much larger company. And so they they most of the time they won't make a mistake when it comes to a fork in the road. It's the passionate business owner that I worry about. So a passionate business owner is somebody, let's say, a yoga instructor or a chef, and they're phenomenal at what they do, and everybody says, you should start your own yoga studio or your own restaurant, and they do. And they're incredibly successful, and they love what they do, and then somebody says, you should open up another studio closer to me because there's always a wait list, or there's always a wait list for your restaurant. And so they do and they don't think of the long-term ramifications of this decision. 
and invariably I'll, I'll hear people say, ah, it was the worst mistake I ever made. I can't get out of this lease. I, I, I bought all this equipment. It was a mistake. I wish I had thought about it. And, you know, in hindsight, I would have just taken what I had. So. Well, that's interesting. Well, we had some growing pains recently, and it's really hard when you're trying to grow. I mean, we were trying, I think we always try to be the entrepreneur and not the small business so much. We always try different things like this radio show, for instance. But what happens when you hire the wrong people? Like, you have to delegate if you're growing, right? What happens if you hire the wrong people and then, when, you know, things start to go in a way you don't want? You fire them. <laughs> well, that's hard to do, though, you know? No, no. It, it, so, yes and no. So, um, I've fired people in my, in my life, in my career, and I've hired people. And, and the, the one thing I'll do when I'm letting people go is I will always try and help them as much as I possibly can if they want my help. Um, it's not working out here. Um, here's why, here's the things that you can do to improve, you know, and, and, you know, I asked you to do it and it didn't work out. So, but let me, I'll, if, if I'm happy to make referrals for you, but in the end, this is your company, it's your blood, sweat, and tears, and you have a mission. Um, one of the other things we talk about with business owners is, I'll say, what's your strategic goal? And they'll kind of look at me and they'll think, uh, what does he mean by that? <laughs> and, and I said, if you and I had lunch on December 31st of this year, and I'm going to ask you a simple question. Did you hit your strategic goal? Usually it's a number. It's a revenue number or profit or market share, number of new stores that you opened. It could be a couple of different things. So I have about four metrics that I measure. And the answer is either yes or no. And if it's yes, great. You know, you go on to the, the next year. And if it's no, you examine why. And the thing is, I say, show me your GPS plan. I don't call it a business plan because a business plan is something you write for a bank or an investor. And once they say yes, you put that in a filing cabinet never to be seen again. But a GPS plan is everything that you're going to need to do between now and the end of the year to help you hit your strategic goal. So think of this. You have a, a smartphone. And if I tell you, uh, Richard, I want you to come over, we'll have some lunch. And you say, okay, give me your address. And you give, I give you my address, you plug it in, and your phone is going to tell you exactly where to go, how many turns it's going to take, and how long it's going to take to get there. And if there's traffic, it'll give you a different location, right? It'll, it'll, it'll tell you to pivot. Imagine having that for your business. Boy, that sounds so awesome. Do you have one of those for us? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the name for that. I think that's how I'm looking at my phone right, right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 not that easy. I guess just speaking as a you know small business entrepreneur, uh, you know Elizabeth and I have been at this now Gearheart Law for 14 years. And sometimes I'm a small business kind of guy, and then sometimes and I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm focused more on just maintaining and, and kind of keeping things running smoothly. Um, and then other times I, we're kind of in the growth mode and we're looking for ways to expand and you know, serve even more clients, right? So um, I think their businesses kind of go through an arc, and at some point, you sort of reach a ceiling of complexity where there's just so many different things going on. It takes a while to sort of acclimate to everything that's going on and you can see, start seeing solutions to what happened. And I mean, that's just been my own personal journey. Uh, I suppose if you're Jeff Bezos, you can break through and, and through those, solve those problems, you know, really, really fast. But uh, if you're like the rest of us, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to figure out what the next steps are. So yeah. he has a lot of money. <laughs> he money does solve a lot of problems money, in a money business. Helps. If you if you have if you have extra <laughs> cash, there's a lot of things that you can do, right? Mm -hmm. And right. Uh, if you don't have cash, then that creates a whole set of different you, problems. Well, you have to be more. Uh, one, you have to be more creative with your options when when money is finite, which it is for almost every small business and entrepreneur out there. And um, you have to play the what if game. And because money is a finite uh, resource, as is time, believe it or not, everybody focuses on money as the ultimate resource. I can't do this because of funding. And I, what I find is that those people 
often mismanage their time even more so than they do their money. And so that's always, I always look at that and I say the, the, the source of your problem is not lack of money, it's the fact that you're mismanaging your time and you're not spending it on what you need to be spending it on. So Brian, what percentage of a person's time and money do you think should go into the different buckets that a business needs to thrive? So, I, you know, and I've read a, a number of books, uh, you know, hundreds of books over the years, and I, I want to say this was part of the seven habits of highly effective people, but um, I, I created my own little formula for it. I have four folders that I use, and I have subfolders off of that, but I have urgent, important, everyday, non-essential. And when you talk about time, okay, so I take everything that I need to do from phone calls and emails to proposals to client meetings and whatnot, and I say, is it one of four things? Is it urgent? Is it important? Is it every day? Or is it non-essential? And I map out everything for that week. And what I do is I take the every day and the non-essential and I delegate them. And I said, this, somebody else needs to handle this because me spending, you know, me spending my time on something that's not essential, like cleaning out the spam folder, is ridiculous when I have so many items in my urgent folder. So I, fo I, I take the urgent and the important and I put them in front of me and I go, okay, let's start with the urgent because that's urgent. And that's where, you're, that's where you start to put your time in. And um, it starts with the biggest boulders first. So what's the, what's the biggest obstacle that you're facing right now? I want you to turn that mountain into a molehill. And it, you might not be able to do the entire project in one day, so you take a piece of it and you start. When you finish the urgent folder, that's when you can open the important folder. So we, we've been talking about running a business, what type of business owner you are, how you wake up in the morning, are you reactive, proactive, predictive? And all of that leads to how am I going to run my business? How, how, where do I want to be at the end of this year? We talked a little bit about that in your strategic goals. Well, in order to get from where you are today to where you want to be on December 31st, you need what I call a GPS plan. Now, a GPS plan is everything you're going to do, every meeting you take, every social media post you, you put up, uh, every proposal you write, everything that you do between now and the end of the year should get you closer to your strategic goals. And what makes that so easy is that when opportunities come up, like somebody calls you and says, hey, I got this great idea, we should partner, or I should introduce you to this potential customer, and you can either say yes or you can say no because you're looking and saying, is that going to get me closer to my goal? If it does, I'll take the meeting. If it doesn't, I can't do that right now. Why don't we revisit that in the new year? So it's really a blueprint for making decisions. Yes. And it's, and it's time management because, you, you know, without the GPS plan, you say, yeah, I'll take that meeting. And all of a sudden, that's an hour out of your day that you're never going to get back. And you know what? I'll write that proposal. I'll, I'll go to that conference. And what the GPS plan also does is it holds you accountable because in your GPS plan, you say, okay, I want to do a million dollars in sales this year. I did... Um, what I did uh, seven hundred thousand last year, and I, I think I can do another three hundred thousand this year. So it's a million dollars. Okay, this is where the accountability comes in. So in your GPS plan, I'm, the first question I'm going to ask is, how much of that seven hundred thousand will you renew? Oh, you only renew six hundred thousand. Okay, so you need four hundred thousand in new business. Where's it coming from? And now I want to see accounts, target accounts that you're going after, or ways that you plan on bringing that revenue in, and then we're going to break it out by month. And so we're going to look January through December, and we're going to create milestones for your business. And every month, I'm going to hold you accountable. Did you hit your January goals? Did you hit February? If not, why not? Where did you, where, where were the time robbers in your GPS plan that took you off course? Right. No, great advice. And uh, at Dear Heart Law, I'm happy to say that we use these kinds of tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we do follow the plan, it, it, it helps a lot. And I think just the process of writing it down makes a big difference. And I, I think having goals is one thing, but committing them to paper where you can see them and putting them in a place where you see them every day uh, can have a tremendous impact. Can I say something? So we both worked in corporate, as we've said many times, and this almost sounds like 
you're the corporate CEO with their employee, except you're the employee of your own business. But when you work in corporate, you have your yearly goals that you have in your bonus depends on how well you do on your yearly goals and you sit down with your supervisor and you go through them and you say how did you do on this one how did you do on that one what happened and then you have somebody who's driving that who's structuring it for you so you kind of take that role for business owners absolutely and and depending on the size of your business you should make everybody who runs a different department do the same thing because in the end it's all about accountability Am I holding myself accountable? And for a lot of business owners, one of the best investments you can make is in a business coach or an advisor. And maybe that's a meeting once a month on a Friday morning, you go out, you get breakfast, and you bring these people in, and they have different skill sets. And so you have a lawyer, and you have a financial advisor, or an accountant, maybe it's one of your key employees, and you sit down, and you have breakfast, and you whiteboard everything. Where are we? Where did we go last month? Where are we are? Where are we right now? More importantly, where do we want to be next month? And and if we're off course, like we lost a big account this month, and we we lost uh, 10, 15 percent of our annual revenue. Okay, how are we going to replace that? And and you you don't want to ask that question after it's happened, right? Okay, wow, that uh, the, because here's what happens: business changes on a dime. And when it does, it's rarely for the better. So like when you get a big client, when you want a big client, that, that took six, seven months, a year maybe to bring them in. When that big client leaves, that's a phone call on a Monday morning or a Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, we're leaving. And you think about the that sucking sound that's coming out of your business. That's the client and all of that revenue. And you look at all of the expenses that are attached to it now that you have to deal with. So, so don't play the what-if game after the client leaves. Ask yourself, at the beginning of the year, what if we lose our biggest client? What if we lose a star salesman? What if we get hacked? What if our building burns down? Yeah. And have answers to those questions so that when it, if and when it does happen, you break open the glass, you pull out the piece of paper, and you go, okay, building burned down, here's what we need to do. Yeah, I, and, and there's so many different ways you have to have a plan B. You know, mm -hmm. if it's a key employee leaves, or somebody's not, you know, paying on time, or X, Y, and Z. I mean, the number of things that you want to, you have to think about are, it's, it's a big list. And I think, though, the longer you're in business, sort of the longer the list becomes, just through experience, and you can, you can plan for these contingencies. But I, I wanted to ask you one question, though, going back to the accountability and your uh, abilities and experiences as a coach. What are some of the things that you do to hold the business owner accountable? Um, and, and, I mean, how do you work with them in a way that they actually feel the accountability, right? Because, I mean, if they're just showing up and everybody's giving lip service, it doesn't really get anywhere, right? You yeah. know, so they really have to feel like they're accountable to you. So how does that work? No skin off my nose. You want to drive your business into the ground? Keep doing what you're doing. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's, we're all adults. And I'll show you how to succeed in business. I'll show you how to achieve your goals at the end of the year. And I'll, I'll hold you accountable in a meeting where I'll say, well, you didn't hit this goal and this company left and you didn't replace that revenue. Why not? Uh, and you can give me any excuse you want, but in the end, it's still an excuse. And it's not my problem because you're the one that's gonna go out of business, not me. And so I walk away and I go, you know what? I got a lot of other clients out there. And when, when you go out of business, I will replace you.